Assalamu alaikum, greetings, and welcome to the Munir Muhammad Show. I'm your host, Jamil Muhammad, and brothers and sisters, we are streaming live. If you'd like to participate in today's conversation, you can give us a call at 773-434-6625. Brothers and sisters, I have a very informative show for you today, but before I introduce our guest, I'd like to remind you, as always, to please follow us on our social media platforms, which include Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please go to our YouTube page, click the like and the subscribe buttons so you can be notified whenever we post a show. Brothers and sisters, I'm excited about our guest today. We're going to be discussing a very, very important upcoming event and actually modest fashion overall. I'm pleased to introduce our guest in studio with me, Sister Carmen Muhammad, the founder of Al Nisa Design. Sir, thank sister. you. Wa alaikum salam. And we also have Sister Sharon Muhammad, a designer of Khalifa Apparel. How are you, Sister? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, yes, for joining sir. us today. Um, as we, we're talking off camera, you know, this is an important subject uh, that we're talking about. But I want to, before we get into the discussion, I want to give you an opportunity to introduce yourselves to our viewing audience and okay. give a little bit about your background. Okay. First of all, mm -hmm. I want to humbly mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. for allowing us the opportunity mm -hmm. to sit here with you and uh, your wonderful audience. Um, we are very grateful for that, sir. Um, mm -hmm. As you stated, my name is Carmen Muhammad. And I am the founder of Alnisa Designs, but I'm also the founder of Women Working Together, Inc., yes, which was an organization that I put together to support the growth and development of women in general, mm -hmm. to deal with issues as it pertain to shaping and molding, you know, our young girls into something great and positive. Um, we are here today to talk about my journey in modest fashion, um, to talk about my background. I became a Muslim when I was 15 years old. Yes. And so uh, it was very interesting because at the time that I was processing, I was actually a dancer on Soul Train. <laughs> so I had my own little fan club, right? Yes. And so one of the things that everyone was curious about was, I can't believe that you're going to follow Elijah Muhammad, right? Yes, because you're going to look like a nun, you know, and I'm saying, no, I don't think so. So that was really the beginning of my interest to style myself because I had such popularity mm -hmm. in the community that I grew up in, in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. And I knew that people were waiting and were interested and wanted to see what is she going to look like, right? Yes. <clears throat> And so, excuse me, with that being said, um, that was the beginning of my journey in yes. fashion. It was to make myself uh, appealing to other young girls like myself and to show them that to be modest was also being hip and cool. Mm -hmm. So that was really the beginning of the journey. And over the years, um, it just kind of snowballed into me having my own line. Yes, ma'am. What about you, Sarah? Well, my journey uh, started when I was a young girl. Um, I came from a large family. My mother at the time was invited to a special occasion event. And she saw this beautiful dress, and she was always very stylish, that she wanted. And it was $800. And at the time, you know, considering the size of our family, she thought that was, um, it was just too much to pay yes. for that dress. So. At that point, she bought a sewing machine, and she went and found some fabulous fabric, and she made herself this uh, <laughs> tasteful, beautiful, regal garment. And so the machine was in the house, and I, I liked to emulate my mother. And I started tinkering, and I had a natural talent that I didn't know was there. And I started sewing for myself, and then I started sewing for my siblings and my grandmother, and different family members and um, a couple years later when I was a young member of the Nation of Islam, um, Mother Farrakhan was gracious to me and allowed me 
to, she didn't know me and allowed me to um, work at the MG, what we called at the time, the MGT shop, but it's really Newell Apparel. Right. And I started sewing modest wear for myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the sisters would request what I was making. And so Khalifa Apparel was launched at that time and I've been sewing ever since. Modest wear. Yes, ma'am. All praises due to Allah. I will say that as someone who grew up in the nation of Islam, mm. always had an appreciation, mm -hmm. of course, for the garments. Yes, uh, my mother, my aunts, grandmother, mm -hmm. um, everyone sewed at the time. You mm -hmm. know, I have a younger sister who was wow. very talented to sew. And I will say, and, and I'd be remiss if I didn't give credit to the modest fashion wear uh, we've had on the show many times out of uh, Muhammad's Temple Number 20 in Camden, under the leadership of Minister Wasim Muhammad, our sister Dr. Nicole Muhammad, who has so elevated fashions mm. out in um, the Camden area, who also is with um, modest wear and apparel. Mm. And it's so important, as you said, you, you know, emulating your mother, mother. you mm -hmm. said, you know, um, and doing that, that's one aspect. And then you, sister, you know, there's a whole separate show about the soul train <laughs> thing. But at that young age, trying to make modest fashion hip and fashionable mm -hmm. and appealing. appealing. And, you know, and I still think when you say that, that's still some of the things that our young sisters and oh. our people in particular look at now. Mm -hmm. And so I find that not only very interesting, but so needed. Mm -hmm. um, and um, for our young women and, and our sisters, period, mm -hmm. overall, you know. And so I applaud you on what you're doing, which you continued uh, success with that. But, um, but I know that we're going to talk about that, but we're here specifically also to promote an event that's mm -hmm. going to yes, be coming sir. up. And so tell me about that. Well, <laughs> I have been blessed for the last, I would say, four or five years to be a part of international Fashion Weeks, um, and in doing so, the modest category of fashion becomes somewhat of the sideshow. Mm -hmm. It's like the appetizer. It's really not the main event. So in traveling and doing the international shows, I was looking at the fact that I was the only black in all of these international shows, Dubai, Paris, Italy, Milan, um, even invited to Istanbul and it really weighed very heavily on me because I'm from Los Angeles and I have a lot of friends that are modest designers and just black designers mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. who had never had the opportunity to showcase on an international level so that was where it really started it was we have got to carve out a niche of our own Mm -hmm. We've got to create our own narrative and not allow someone else to create the narrative for us. And when you look at fashion and you look at what has been given to us <laughs> uh, on a platter, and, and we've been told that this is high fashion, but then when you think back historically and you look at black women that were dressed in Harlem, when you look at the nation of Islam, when it first came about, we've always been the authors of modest swear, not the Middle East, because they had to do it. See, we didn't have to do it. We did it because we loved Islam and we loved what we were being taught. And we understood what the Quran said when it said a veal woman, a righteous woman, a Muslim woman. So with all of that being said, I said, you know what? I've given a lot of time to international shows. Now it's time for me to bring them to us and allow them to see more than what they see when they see the sound bites, when they see the pants hanging down low, and when they see all the other stuff dropping it like it's hot. No, 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 no. That is not who we are as a people. So come to us and let me bring you through the catalyst of modest fashion. Let me show you what a real civilized woman looks like, dressed like, talks like, and walk like, so that I can help you change your opinion of who we are, and I can build the kind of unity with our young women mm -hmm. that they want to be like what they're seeing. That's right. You know, you say that, and I, it goes back historically. You know, growing up in the nation, of course, 
I know that when you're in your MGT uniform, there's no respect like it. You know, everyone mm -hmm. respects you, so how beautiful you are. However, it doesn't always translate out there. Our, our sisters don't always feel that way. Mm -hmm. And so when you have this line of modest fashion, um, as, as you say, you know, we're the authors of it. You see Absolutely. it, you know, in other other um, uh, cultures, mm -hmm. East, but to have our people recognized, accepted, seeing it on that stage is a wonderful thing. I want to dig into that and some of um, your thoughts to share. We have a caller. I want to go to the line first. Okay? Yes, sir. Caller, you're near. Go ahead with your question or comment. Hey, how are you? This is Mary J. with Drip International Modeling Agency and wanted to call from Detroit, Michigan to keep our sister encouraged, inspired, and uplifted with her journey. And we're doing our part here and we want to keep her uplifted and let her know that we're encouraging the Muslim sisters and brothers around the city within our reach to put on more and keep on more and keep in more. So with that being said, more is more because, you know, around this area and this day and age, they try to encourage our sisters and brothers to take off more. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted them to keep it on and keep more knowledge in and keep each other uplifted how we should be. Thank you so much, my brother. We appreciate that calls and, of course, the encouraging words. Thank you so much. Yes, I think we have another caller. We're going to stay with the lines. Caller, go ahead with your next question or comment. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I'm enjoying the show. He missed it. You know, this reminds me of a, uh, a, car, um, a cartoon illustration by Gerald 2X in the Nation of Islam uh, newspaper back in the day, Muhammad Speaks, where he had this homosexual man from France uh, in the, in the, in the uh, illustration panel, and he was uh, actually designing clothes for black Americans. Mm -hmm. It's pretty funny stuff. Okay. But um, what I'd like to know from the sisters is that um, in their design, is there a, 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 a thin line or a broad line between the Islamic looking wear for the sisters and the actual African garb looking wear or is there like a meshing and melting of the two? I'm going to hang up and listen. And thank you for the distinguished guest, Black Club. Thank you, Brother Emmanuel. That's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. And I certainly, and I want to give the floor to my sister, the designer here. Mm -hmm. But um, for me, I will answer that question based up off of the fact that I have over 20 African designers mm -hmm. that are coming from every continent of Africa to this show. Uh, right now, we're dealing with some visa issues, but we intend to join hands mm -hmm. and to begin to promote more modest fashion. Uh, of course, when I've looked at a lot of their wear, it is very, it's designed along the culture. culture. Yes, it's very cultural. They use very cultural fabrics in their aesthetic design. But I also see a little bit of the influence of the world in some of the fashion that I see. And it's not to to be um, bashing anyone, but it just goes to show how much we have been influenced by their way of life, that we feel that if something is not form-fitting to the body, even if it's quote-unquote modest, they expect for it to be form-fitting because they feel that this is what the world wants to see. Um, a lot of the skin exposure, um, it, it, it em emulates what you see when you look at a lot of European fashion. So for me, when I'm designing, I like to concentrate on the aestheticness of the design. And I like for my design lines to be clean and to be right down to the modern time. You have to incorporate some of that in your fashion if you are going to attract the youth. You cannot attract the youth and not have something that's going to be attractive to the naked eye. You don't have to be, you know, so cultural in your design aesthetic that they can't understand what they're looking for. Yes. You need to make something that's right down to the modern time, but that it's attractive 
and it's something that they say, oh, I want that. You yes. know, I would like to wear that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do when I concentrate and focus on design. Mm -hmm. I make a lot of tailored women's suiting. So a lot of my designs are tailored. They're not form fitting to the body, but they're tailored and they're very clean lines and it's a clean look. Mm -hmm. And I use color to attract the youth. So there are different elements that you can incorporate mm -hmm. in your aesthetic design that will be attractive to the young people. Okay. Um, but as far as, you know, how the African uh, designs are there, like I said, centered around a lot of culture. What That's I'm right. seeing now with African designers is that they do a lot of art with their designs. So they will put uh, something like a face on their designs or on the back of the designs. And that kind of is a greater signification of the fact that it's coming from Africa. Yes, ma'am. So what are your thoughts, Sister Sharon? Well, I've designed a lot of things that, um, based off of my, um, the fact that I'm a wife and a mother, I have eight children, and I was always considering the fact that um, having the children present, I wanted to have something functional. Right. So I would always use fabrics that were easy to care for. It was stylish, but the, the sisters could put it in the washing machine, they could put it in the dryer, it'll still look new, it'll still look crisp, you know, and it was easy to care for. But it served, you know, the function. It was um, easy to wear, it was casual, but it was elegant. You know, and when you mentioned functionality, I know that being able to wear it in multiple settings, mm -hmm. whether it's a meeting, whether it's an event, sometimes our days are long and Absolutely. events are fluid and things like that. So the fabric, I'm sure, mm -hmm. and the care for it mm -hmm. uh, makes a difference. And I think what Brother Emmanuel was alluding to, and we, we kind of did that, when we say modest fashion, mm -hmm. we're, um, your audience are not all Muslims. They could be non-Muslims. And, so, and that's what I think, as you were talking about, appealing to people who may not be Muslims, mm -hmm. but have the desire right. for modest fashion. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that we have to ask, because what we define as modest versus maybe mm -hmm. France, Italy, something like that, mm -hmm. you know, they, they try to expand that. And so what would you say to someone in our viewing audience who's not a Muslim, mm -hmm. but interested in an alternative style of dress, more modest dress? You know? Well, mm -hmm. I would say that, um, mm -hmm. you know, when you define modest fashion, what it is, it's this fashion that is a relaxed type of fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not body conscious fashion. And as you stated, no, it's not just for Muslims. You have a large community within the Orthodox Jewish community mm -hmm. who wear modest fashion. You have a lot of Indian women that wear modest fashion. So modest fashion is not just for Muslims. Modest fashion is for anyone who wants to look stylish, who wants to wear clothing that is not necessarily form-fitting. Um, and there are just different elements. Um, I like what Sister's doing, and we have so much variety in the show that's coming up. My modest line is a luxury modest line, so it, it gears towards the luxury audience. Mm -hmm. But basically, you know, you have so many different niches in areas of modest fashion. But when you say modest fashion, you're just talking about beautiful clothing that cover the body. Yes. So, you know, that basically is what modest fashion is. It's clothes that cover the body that's not revealing, but very beautiful clothing mm -hmm. that has been styled for different occasions. We have a young lady in the show that does strictly swimwear mm -hmm. for Muslim women, uh, strictly athletic wear for Muslim women. And it is durable. You can work out in it. You can ride bikes in it. You can do all of that in it. And what you're going to find, it is not any different from any other athletic wear other than it's been modestly designed and it's a little bit more relaxed in the fit. Yes, ma'am. I said, you know, and I, I like that you um, did the distinction because it's something for everyone, you know, mm -hmm. and 
um, I, I understand, especially nowadays, since when you say functionality, now I'm curious, you know, with your children, um, as far as your daughters and the people grow up, how did they receive the wear? I mean, <laughs> you know, I know that you emulated your mother, yeah, mm -hmm. but sometimes our children don't always uh, do, that, you know, do that, but just seeing it and being introduced to it at a, at a young age, did you see the appreciation, the confidence in that? Um, when I was sewing for my daughters, yes, I would always put them in um, beautiful colors, yes. soft, feminine colors, yellows, pinks, baby blues, and I made clothes that they would twirl around in, and if they twirled around in it, they liked it. They were happy, they wanted to wear it, they felt beautiful, yes, and I didn't have any problem with my girls wanting to be covered up. Yeah. because they felt beautiful in the garment mm -hmm. and they were beautiful mm -hmm. you know and so glad you say that because it's really about defining our standard of Absolutely. beauty for ourselves mm -hmm. so much of what we've been taught has been by our oppressors that they over sexualize everything mm -hmm. and we have began to adopt something that's overly sexualized into beauty and that's appealing mm -hmm. but there's a radiant beauty mm -hmm. of our people and our sisters in particular mm -hmm. that's really highlighted when you talk about the colors the mm -hmm. fashion the clean lines mm -hmm. you know and I know that I'm biased but there's nothing more <laughs> beautiful than that but before we go and I, we have a caller so I want to make sure we get them in so caller go ahead with your question hey thanks for taking another call from me uh, okay. the, the questions the answers were fabulous and I, I appreciate it and I, when I think of a Muslim sister you know, and her dress, you know, certain sisters come to mind. Uh, one would be Sister Shaharazad Ali, uh, Sister Tanyetta, and, uh, and another, uh, Sister Baina Sharif uh, in the past, uh, who was the wife of uh, uh, Brother Hamza, Theodore Hamza. And uh, that number 19 dress, where did that really come from? If they knew the history, I would appreciate that. And I would like to give much kudos to our own sister Shakira Muhammad, who makes her own beautiful clothes uh, at Crow. Uh, she's a wonderful dresser sister too. And what is your mom, brother? Fantastic. Well, thank you, uh, brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you out that you answer. Uh, uh, sister, I think it's about the number nineteen dress. Which yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I know that there. Um, it, it's kind of hard for me mm -hmm. personally to speak to that. Mm -hmm because the number 19 was created by Mother Tainetta Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And um, may Allah forever be pleased with her. But I would not want to expound yes, upon that because I didn't personally know what she was thinking when she created it. Mm -hmm. um, she's talked a lot about it, but you know, I, I don't want to be the one to right. try and expound upon where it came from and how did the idea originate yes, for right. her you know um i think that would probably be a better question mm -hmm. that could be asked maybe by her son brother yeah. minister yeah. ishmael right. he would probably be very qualified to yes, say what inspired his mother mm -hmm. with that particular design yes ma'am i want to go back to something you said about the event you've uh been on the international front, but you said bringing them here mm -hmm. to learn about uh, what we do here and the beauty here in our modest fashion. Mm -hmm. And so um, I want to take a break, but when we get back, I want you to talk more about why yes, you sir. want to do that and how important that is for our people and what we're doing. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Brothers, this is we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back on the other side with more interesting conversation. We'll be right back. You are watching The Manir Muhammad Show, a production of Crow. Please take time to join us at Crow, the Coalition for the Remembrance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Crow is the National Archive of the Nation of Islam and houses one of the largest collections of historical audio, video, and print documentation on the total black experience. Crow is located at 2435 West 71st Street, the corner of 71st and Crow Lane. We are open seven days a week, 9 to 5. Our number, 773-925-1600. We look forward to seeing you at Crow. Knowledge is power. 
To discover sources of power and knowledge, join us in reading two books from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Birth of a Savior and the True History of Jesus. The Birth of a Savior details the birth of this God, his name and his purpose, what he would do and how he would do it. The True History of Jesus, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, outlines the true story of Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. These two books and more of the plain truth as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, are waiting for you at Crow, the Coalition for the Remembrance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, 2435 West 71st Street, open seven days a week. We encourage you to take the time to visit us and learn more about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's teachings. We hope to see you soon. If they get your arm help, that how creates more diseases in your body than you have any dreams of. In fact, the body stop eating the heart, eat right, eat the proper food, and you will find 75% of your sickness leaving you. Yes, yes try. Yes. Sister Sajda Muhammad, we are proud to announce that the Sajda House commemorative Elijah coins are finally here as we renovate and restore the former home of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We have recycled the old copper gutters and downspouts and created a one ounce 39 millimeter coin made of 100% pure copper. Each coin is professionally graded and has its own barcode and registration number. This priceless heirloom, made from recycled copper from the messenger's home, is now available at SajdaHouse.com. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters, we are back continuing our conversation with Sister Carmen Muhammad and Sister Sharon Muhammad. And remember, this is a live call-in show. If you have a question or a comment, you can give us a call at 773-434-6625. Sister, I was going back to the event that's coming up um, later this month and the importance of it and why it's so significant to have the international designers of fashion people come here mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. understand what we're doing. It's really about creating a narrative. It's really about inclusion and diversity. Because in my travels internationally, like I said, I would be at Fashion Week events and I would be the only black designer. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I hear them say there's inclusion and diversity in the business of fashion, um, I would have to challenge that. When I look at major fashion publications like Vogue, Elle, and other publications, very rarely do you see other designers other than iconic designers. So what do we need to do to be able to carve out a niche and make ourselves a sustainable company within the business of fashion? That means you have to be able to 
create another narrative. You've got to be able to carve out a niche. How do you do that? You've got to be able to bring a certain amount of global attention to what it is that you're doing. This is not a regular fashion show. This is a show that has been designed to elevate not just the mind of the woman, but to elevate those individuals who don't get these type of platforms. Again, when you see a New York Fashion Week or an International Fashion Week, you're not going to see a lot of emerging designers on that platform. So in order for us to make ourselves sustainable, to make ourselves able to carve out a niche, to be able to grow ourselves in business where we have minority enterprise that's making millions of dollars every year, just like everybody else, then we've got to do something on that level. It has to be done on a global level. It has to be something that's going to attract the media. Unfortunately, the melon in this skin alone is not going to attract the media. It's not going to attract those that can help us get to that next level. So this is really about opportunity, dear brother. And it's about bringing the right mixture of people mm -hmm. to this event that it can get that global outreach. Um, mm -hmm. One of my very dear friends, she is one of the major presenters at Paris Fashion Week. She has chosen to come with her entourage to see what we're going to do. I have the Al Huda Center of Modest Fashion and Design out of Dubai. They are a conglomerate. They are coming to see what we're going to do. I have Lexi Mojo Eyes, who is considered to be the iconic global Fashion Week person all over the continent of Africa. As a matter of fact, they just started an online retail store called Agogo and it's being supported by every major government in Africa from Sierra, Sierra Leone to Gabon to Nigeria. I mean every continent in Africa is very huge. I have Mr. Uzo Yumbroto. He's coming. He is the creator of Smart City Legos. He just did a deal with Dubai where he's going to make Africa have a continent and become a go-to place in Nigeria just like what you see in Dubai these people are people that are really doing things on an international level so I needed to bring them into my environment and then I needed to take those that are trying to build their industries build their businesses set up manufacturing I needed them to be able to showcase in front of a global audience like this so that we can begin to carve out a niche and get the respect, not necessarily from the business of fashion, but from the consumers and the buyers of fashion. We needed to connect and we needed it to be an emotional connection so that we can start having them go online and purchasing from us. So that now I'm giving an award to Mr. Lexi Mojo Eyes and it's called Hands Across Africa. What it is, it's about us here in America connecting with our brothers and sisters in Africa so that we no longer have to go to China and depend on China to manufacture for us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go to Indonesia. We can go right there in Africa, create jobs for Africa. We can import and export our clothes duty free and we can build not just there, but we can build something for ourselves right here. So that's what this event is about. It's a combination of a lot of things. Um, also, just very quickly, we have a Unity Peace Walk that we're going to do over that weekend. And we're inviting everyone to join us for that walk. Because fashion for me, uh, my motto is fashion is an ambassador to world peace. Why do I say that? Because through my fashion, I can reach anybody I want to. It separates all economic barriers, social barriers, religious barriers, it doesn't matter. If they like that fashion or they like my sister's fashion, now they're going to become emotionally connected to us. So what we're doing is we're trying to build, 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 build. But we have to start somewhere. This is the framework. 
this is the groundwork. We decided, or I decided, to do it here in Chicago because this is where I'm from. That's bad. Let me ask your sister Sharon, listen to that. And I know your um, this event is coming up. What's the dates? Do we, it we is, uh -huh. like I said, we're having a press conference on June the 29th. Mm -hmm. And then we'll start shows on the 30th, and it'll be the 30th through the 3rd. Now it's going to end on July the 3rd with the very first ever Modest Met Gala. The Met Gala is the biggest thing in the whole business of fashion. It happens every year. They bring all these stars mm -hmm. into New York, dress them in costumes, and then they put them before the world. We're saying no, no, no. We're going to create our own mm -hmm. gala, and it's going to be the modest Met Gala so that mm -hmm. we can develop a different type of appeal. And our young girls are saying, hey, right. I want to get dressed up, and I want to go to that. And that's going to be at the Contemporary Art Museum in Chicago. All right. So, sir, let me ask you, as a designer um, for, and as we said, functionality and more fluid every day, where... What goes into your designs? I know we talked about colors and fabrics, but where do you get some of your inspiration from? I love textures. Textures? So I might see a fabric that is an unusual texture. Mm -hmm. And I look at the texture, and then it gives me uh, the idea of what I want to make. Mm -hmm. And I could always appreciate, because I, I can't always do this with everything, mm -hmm. but to have an idea. So mm -hmm. you could have an idea mm -hmm. and then bring it into fruition. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular process you have, a system that you use all the time? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. no. It just uh, depends on the inspiration. Well, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. When I became a mother for the first time, um, I was a nursing mother, mm -hmm. but there was nothing for nursing mothers. Mm -hmm. So I designed a garment for nursing mothers, and that serves a great function and purpose. So I designed mm -hmm. a garment for nursing mothers, and that, that stemmed out of a need. So a lot of times I design things when a need arises. All right, sister. Now, I know that this is about modest fashion. It's about the sisters. But as a brother, I have to ask about your husband. Does he ever, <laughs> did, he, did you ever, you know, say, hey, make me something? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want to get back on point because I know we were like, hey, what about a little leisure right. work for me or something? But, you know, going back to. Uh, how can somebody find out more? Is there a website about? Yes, sir. Okay. They okay. can go to www.chicagomfw.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Or if they're interested in other ways, they can email us at Women Working Together Inc. at yahoo.com. What do we hope the lessons that could be learned from our people who are just attending? They might have just a, a fairly new interest in fashion, but seeing those designs, what kind of impact do you hope that it has on some of our people attending? Well, I hope that it changes their thinking mm -hmm. about what really modest fashion is. Again, there are a lot of misconceptions about modest fashion because we often associate it with the word veal. And, you know, in whatever country someone lives in, that modest fashion is designed around their aesthetic in that country. Mm -hmm. So in places like Saudi Arabia, you might see the women with an abaya on with the head covering and you only see their eyes. For someone in that part of the world, that's modest fashion. In India, you might see them and they're wearing modest clothing, but they're wearing a draped scarf, you know. Uh, in Pakistan, you might see them do something different. Indonesia is a little bit more fast forward now. So they wear things that are sporty, a lot of casual. Mm -hmm. They wear a lot of hats with their hijabs. So you're getting to see variations of modest fashion. And that's the beauty of it. That's why you should never feel limited about being a covered woman mm -hmm. because you can do so much with modest fashion, mm -hmm. you don't have to just have on covered clothing and not be stylish. Mm -hmm. You can wrap your head 
in a turban. You can wear a hijab. You can wear a scarf. You can wear a headpiece. You can wear even caps, you know, with scarves. So it just kind of depends. But that's what I'm hoping that they're going to get out of that. They're going to see the different variations of modest fashion. They're going to see the different levels of aesthetic design coming from so many talented designers. And I'm so honored to have my sister mm -hmm. here with me yeah. because I've watched her over the years and I've saw some of the fashion and I said, you know what? When I'm doing something, you got to come. You got to be a part of it. And that's the thing. You know, um, one of my very best friends, Nelson Mandela's daughter, Maki Mandela, mm -hmm. I helped her to launch her line at a show that we did in February, or I'm sorry, November in Italy. And the show was a launch of Nelson Mandela streetwear. And people were like, what is that going to look like, mm -hmm. right? South Africa, yeah. <laughs> Nelson Mandela streetwear. But what they did was they took some of Nelson Mandela's art and they incorporated it in the, in the aesthetic design. And it's very beautiful. Her clothing is going to be a part of the show. So it's just going to give people an opportunity to see so much talent coming from so many talented emerging designers. And we're not in competition with each other. Mm -hmm. I want to be very clear about that. What we're doing is we're building an institution. And so you got variations of that institution. You got this beautiful sister, talented, sitting next to me. You got another sister coming from the Philippines who's an Islamic sister. You got a sister coming from Africa. So what you get to do is you get to pick and choose. Mm -hmm. You know, you get to switch it up. You get to, hey, today I'm going to wear something from an African designer that's modest. Tomorrow I'm going to wear something from a Philippine designer. So. Yeah. Let That's me, really what it's uh, about. Ask both of you this. Um, I know you've been doing, you've very well experienced in this, and you've obviously probably got, received a lot of feedback from people who you've introduced into modern, uh, modest uh, apparel. What are some of the feedback that you get from people who then never even knew that there was so much variety mm -hmm. in modest wear and stuff like that? Um, and I think it might help some of the viewers because they may be limited in their knowledge of what modest apparel looks like. Mm -hmm. um, this is usually my experience. I was in Atlanta not too long ago. My husband and I went into the store, it was a restaurant, and there was a young lady who was a, another patron, mm -hmm. and she saw me, she liked what I was wearing. She tapped me on the shoulder, mm -hmm. she actually gave me her number, mm -hmm. and she requested, you know, uh, that I make the same thing that I was wearing for her. So a lot of times they're admiring what you're wearing. They want to know where did you get it? How can I get it? How much it costs? And when I tell them, no, I made this or uh, I had my hand in it, they, they're they excited to ask, you know, see if they could also get what you're wearing. Do you find that this um, is a growing feel? We have a lot of young, <laughs> talented, mm -hmm brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. um, yes, my folks are sisters, and many of them are here, fashion design, they're into that, but um, are you finding more young people becoming interested in, tell me what it's like to, uh, as far as mentorship or passing mm -hmm. that on and encouraging some of our young people to go in this field? Well, modest fashion, um, in the year of the pandemic, mm -hmm. the, it was a $355 billion dollar industry mm -hmm. even with the pandemic mm -hmm. it has been stated that in the next 10 years modest fashion will represent a trillion dollar industry so when if you're a designer and you're thinking about sustainability you're thinking about sustainability not just in fabric but you're thinking about sustainability in the business of fashion mm -hmm. so you're going to be looking at modest fashion as an area of developing yourself and possibly including that in your collection and in your line if you're not in particularly a modest fashion designer. So modest fashion is a booming industry. If you really follow some of the most iconic designers, they now are designing collections centered around modest fashion. 
Um, I was recently, a couple of years ago, in the mall in Beverly Hills, and I walked past the Gucci store, and I had to take a double take, because when I looked at the mannequin, she literally had on a headpiece, and she had been mm -hmm. designed, her clothing had been designed to appeal to the modest woman. So all you got to do is just follow it because trends come and go. Mm -hmm. So with a designer, they're looking for a niche audience. They're looking for how they're going to sustain themselves financially in the business of fashion. So that's what they're doing. They are really looking at modest fashion. Mm -hmm. So with any emerging up and coming designer, I would definitely say research and study modest fashion. Well said. Brothers and sisters, with that being said, we're going to take another quick break and come back with more interesting conversation. We'll be right back. Searching for a restaurant that serves delicious home-cooked meals at an affordable price like your grandmother used to make? Well, the search is over. Stop by McArthur's, the new talk of Chicago. We offer a warm atmosphere with friendly service and excellent meals, ranging from carry-out, dine-in, or catering for your special events. McArthur's is open seven days per week from 11 a.m. until 9 p.m. Come visit us at 5412 West Madison Street or call us at 773-261-2316. Um, Lake, um, brothers and sisters, we are back continuing our wonderful conversation, and we're just going to rewind a bit <laughs> for our sister Sharon. We asked the question <laughs> if she ever did anything for her husband, made him some from time to time. Sister, you want to go back for that answer, sister? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, sister misunderstood the question, but, you know, she wanted to at least acknowledge this from time to time she makes her husband. Some loungewear. Some loungewear, yeah. things like that. And speaking of that, there will be men's fashion also at the event coming up. I know yes. we didn't mention that, yes. but uh, talk, so go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. <laughs> we actually are going to, we have a young uh, sister out of Atlanta who's mm -hmm. 15 years old. Mm -hmm. She has her own collection mm -hmm. in the show. Um, and we also have another young sister um, that's going to be participating. And then we have another designer who's doing children's clothing. Okay. So we actually have a children's um, session of fashion. And we have male clothing mm -hmm. that's going to be shown. Um, and the male designers are from Africa. And are you doing anything for the men? 
Maybe one outfit. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe one. What? Yeah, my son. So um, mm -hmm. we're really excited about that, mm -hmm. and that's what I meant when I said the diversity. Yes. Um, but also, another thing that we are doing with this show, Dear Brother, is I'm hoping to be able to sponsor from 20 to 30 students mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. Chicago and bring them with us over that weekend so that they're able to mentor uh, with some of the professional people that we're going to have there that's going to be doing things with the show. My producer is actually out of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. He's worked in Hollywood for over 35 years. He is the producer of the Grammys, mm -hmm. the Academy Awards, um, the Soul Train Awards, and we are going to shadow someone with him so that for that entire weekend they'll see what it's like to put together an event like that. We're going to shadow someone with some of the designers so that they can see what goes into, you know, a collection showing mm -hmm. on stage at a show like that. So we're going to involve them in a lot of different aspects of what we're doing over the weekend. And the idea is to grow an appetite in our young people mm -hmm. so that they understand you're bigger than just Chicago. Mm -hmm. You're bigger than your community. It doesn't stop here. I need you to develop an appetite so that you want to go out and rule the world, that you see yourself doing that. And I believe that in order for young people to do that, they have to experience it. It has to be an experience. Yes, ma'am. And sister, I think it's so wonderful, especially the part about the students. And sister, I know you glossed over that, but your son is going to be participating? Yes, he is. Well? Yes. Okay. He's, right. a, he's a budding designer. He likes to make streetwear. Yes, ma'am. So we'll see if we could showcase some of his designs. Right. So, and brothers and sisters, um, I encourage you to please, if you're in, if you have the ability, make sure that you go and visit. Mm -hmm. And again, can we go over the, the dates? And, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Again, it's June the 30th through mm -hmm. July 3rd. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come every day. Our mm -hmm. closing ceremony is on Saturday night, um, and we're going to feature designers collections uh, most of the day, all day long, into the evening. Um, also, we have the Unity Peace Walk mm -hmm. that we want to invite them to. We have a session where we're bringing in a young woman who does a healing with women. And it's going to be a sisterhood session where we're going to come together for two hours. We're not going to do anything but focus on us and healing ourselves of anything that might be standing in our way right now mm -hmm. and keeping us from doing what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we have the ball, the gala mm -hmm. on Sunday night. So we are inviting people to please come, please support us because an event like this is not cheap. Right. You know, we're talking about a $300,000 event and mm -hmm. I don't have that mm -hmm. kind of money personally mm -hmm. to do this. But what I do have is I have the backing of the spirit of those three men, you know, Master Farad Muhammad, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And because I have that backing, yeah. I will achieve what it is. And with the wonderful staff and crew that I have, with wonderful designers like this sister here, mm -hmm. we're ready to take control of this place. And yeah make a statement. Let me ask you, and I haven't been to a fashion week, so as you model certain fashions, will any be available for purchase there? Or? Yes. yes. Okay. After okay. each collection is shown mm -hmm. on that evening, that designer will have their own area and their own space right. so that you can have dialogue with them about something that you've seen that you might want for yourself, that mm -hmm. walking suit <laughs> that maybe she's not telling us about. Yes, no, I'm ma just kidding. <laughs> but um, you will have that opportunity yes, to engage with all of the designers. I yes, think, sir. Uh, most importantly, we talk about support. Yeah. You know, and this show, you know, airs internationally. You know, for those who may not be able to be mm -hmm. here present, there are still ways. You still want them to support you. How can they support or make they a donation? They can support us through donations, and we're going to be streaming this show all over the world yes, uh, because of the people that are involved our partners we have a big group in Africa mm -hmm. we have a group in Dubai mm -hmm. and then the Al Huda Center mm -hmm. of Modest Fashion and Design is in over 42 Muslim countries 
around the world. So we will be streaming this event mm -hmm. and they can go on the website mm -hmm. and they can sign up and they'll get a barcode and they'll be able to click on. We're encouraging people that can't come. If you just want to do a watch party, mm -hmm. get together with your girlfriends, cook some hors d'oeuvres, cook some wonderful food, get some apple cider and sit up and watch us as we make history, inshallah, okay. on that weekend. And again, before we close out, I'd like for you all to give the website just one more time. It is www.chicagomfw.com or you can reach us with Women Working Together, Inc. at yahoo.com. Sisters, I thank you so much for joining us. We thank you for having it. us. Wish you all the success in the world with the event, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Brothers and sisters, I hope you enjoyed our broadcast today. And remember to find out more about what we do at Crow, please go to www.crow.org. I'm your host, Jamil Muhammad. Thank you so much for viewing. Leaving you with the greetings of peace and paradise. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs>